Hello and welcome to Unity TV with myself, Alan Gould, and today we're going to be joined by Miles Gaffney, uh, Cork and local Northside legend, uh, one of the greatest musicians to come out of the Northside in many a year, and I'll be chatting to him right after this. Miles, thanks very much for joining me on Unity TV. I'm joined by Mr. Miles Gaffney, um, fantastic musician, a local Cork man, but most importantly, he's an art sign man. Thanks very much for joining us today, Miles. Um, thanks very much for taking time out of your schedule. Miles, I'll start off, I suppose. How are you? I'm very good. I'm a bit tired today. A bit are you? Throat's a bit sore this morning. Were you heavy gigging over the last few weeks with Easter? Uh, I was. I was indeed. I was. Uh, Maybe two nights off, maybe three. But that's the name of the game, mate. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. And how would you unwind, Miles, after, we'd say, a weekend of it or a gig? It must be, you know, if you're in front of 100, 150 plus people, what do you do for me time, for Miles Gaffney time? Um, well, most importantly, I give everybody my time in there afterwards. Anyone that sticks around to have a chat with me, I talk to them. Sometimes, just, Quite this conversation, but sometimes <laughs> it's something that's very valuable because sometimes people come up to you and they give you an idea or say, Look, I think you should might write a song about this or look into this or you know, give, it, give me information that I don't know or that you wouldn't have thought of. Me. Yeah, and then so I spend a lot of time talking to people after I'm finished and then I go home. And when you go home, you're on your own, you only go home to your family, that's mm -hmm. all that's there at the end of the day when you go home. Does Grace and your four children are obviously the other side of Miles Gaffney, the people oh, yeah. that well, don't, people well, don't well, see I, I mean, I, uh, I like to have a tiger beer when I go home. Um, I, 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 I don't really watch television. I don't. I kind of prefer to be writing something at night time. I write, I write every day. So your mind is all, doesn't switch off, it's always... No, no I, I, I write every day. It might be a verse, it might be a line, it might be only a word. But every day I carry three different jotters with me all the time. Three really? different journals, yeah. I have one in the house, one in my car, and then if I'm out in the hole, I have one in my pocket. Or the phone. I email songs to myself. Good idea. So then I, I just go back then and go through emails and I'm writing. So oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Because I forget then. Do you know I forget what I'm after writing? Of course, of course. And then when you're writing a song and you go back into the emails, oh, look at that, I forgot about that. So uh, I just, it's, it's, my house is pretty hectic. Kids, uh, especially having twins, um, yeah. But we 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 work around. But you know, it it is what it is. Like we don't. My wife obviously and her support, they wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but she gave me full backing when I started. Of course, she did. Been away from home, traveling away. It's dangerous as well. You have to, you know, driving late at night time. You have to be with some boat and stuff. So, would you have anybody with your miles in regards to, you know, people that would go to your gigs? Would they travel with you, whether they're local or far? Um, sometimes if I was playing somewhere not in Cork, guys that follow me might say, mm -hmm. "Look, we love to come down to wherever you are tonight. Um, would you bring us in your car, yeah? So I do. There's one chap there. He's actually from North, North Kerry. And um, Jamie is the name, Jamie Henry, first fair supporter. And uh, he's often travelled around with me to different venues now outside the cock, you know. Okay. It's good because it's company for me and we can talk about, you know, they tell me what songs are coming to hear me singing and I keep it in mind and I, I give them a mention on the stage and stuff. Then that, that makes them feel all the more kind of, I suppose, important in a way For that they went all of their way to come and travel to see me play. Of course. But uh, most of the time I travel on my own. And uh, I don't want to listen to the music I play. I listen to different music on my way and back from gigs. I listen to Led Zeppelin or Queen or Iron Maiden or someone, but I wouldn't be listening to that, music. That's something I'd comment in a second, Wales, about your own personal music choices. But like your journeys going to and from gigs, if I remember correctly, I did hear you say it a couple of years ago that as a, an artist, you were giving yourself five years in the Cork scene to either make it or break it and I think you're in year three of that and if it's fair to say I think you've well and truly made it in Cork. Yeah, 
Well, well, when, when I went to school, I, I was a big admirer of. Um, well, I, I was I loved history, and uh, I had a teacher in school called Mr. Minehead, Michael Minehead, great teacher he was actually, and Mr. Minehead showed me how to write essays, right? For higher level history, because you have to have five essays, and it could be anything, it could be European or Irish, whatever. But I had a big, big interest in, in all aspects of history, mm -hmm. and the way he showed me to write the essays is the same method that he was known to write the songs. So school does work for all those yeah, watching. School does school work. School does yeah. work. Yeah, um, the North Monastery School definitely worked for me, um, and the school that I've gone back to a few times now to talk to the students and stuff as well. Um, and I also recorded on Vanish the Hoi Gabo. But anyway, we're going off the, um, we're going off the beaten track. Um, so yeah, so I used that technique to write the songs and um, I went ahead on it. All right. I, I said, Stalin, I learned about Stalin in school and he had five year plans in Russia. Mm -hmm. And I said, right, I'm going to base my business on what I learned at school, five year plan, and at the individual review, am I going to carry on for the next five years, or am I not? And um, but I'm well and truly ahead of my goal. I don't want to be some big head or anything, but like, I, I don't want to. I need to do here. But Miles, I suppose a goal is just that. It's you're setting out your own personal stalls as to what it is you'd like to achieve, and you're now into your third year actively on the Cork scene. You're well established in the local um, area. You're also well established further beyond to that. But I do remember as well um, that Las Vegas um, was put on hold due to yeah. obviously the arrival of your two beautiful children. So where is that in your five year plan at the minute? Um, it's still there. I, I just thought, that's oh, sure, well, Grace will have the twins and uh, so we just get over in three months and I'm, I'm, um, I just carry on as normal traveling or whatever, mm. but that didn't happen. It just was impossible. Um, Understandably, the two, the two of us were the two of us were just knackered from from it, like we were just drained. And um, so that's why I decided to make a second album then mm -hmm. while I was here because I wasn't traveling. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's Vegas. It'll go ahead, all right. Um, no, I haven't really touched base with them since really. Um, but I know I I it's still, it's still there. Yeah, like it's I was told when you want to come back. But I am I am going to America uh, in the New Year. Like one hundred percent. I have a record uh, label in California, reading music, and I'm also dealing with another man in uh, New York by the name of Donny Cow, originally from Douglas actually, and um, he's been putting me into a lot of the American media and all at the moment. Irish okay. Irish media. The Examiner USA and the New York Echo and well, Irish people. So when I do get there, I suppose they'll be familiar with my story mm -hmm. and my songs, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, Las Vegas. I will. I will definitely go there too. And take taking Miles Gaffney away from the the entertainer, the musician. Tell us a bit about Miles Gaffney, the person. What would you've grown up listening to yourself um, in Redemption Road as a young boy? What what were your interests or what what were you listening to back then? Well, my dad got me into the the, the big variety of music in our house. There's music always in our house. There was never a musician in our house, but music was always a big part of our lives. And um, the Eagles, huge in my house. Queen, huge. Um, the Carpenters, the Furies. Um, it was, all, it was all different types of music and um, I got big into Queen actually, I know every Queen song. Um, couldn't play the guitar like Brian May though. <laughs> and I can't sing like Freddie Orkney. <laughs> but but I, really, I, I really like Queen and um, then as I kind of matured myself to my teens I got big into Bon Jovi. Oasis were huge at the time. I was mad about Oasis. I used to get slagged off actually about listening to Oasis. And I went to see Noel Gallagher last year, and the same fellas used to slag me off for there as well. You know, because I suppose I was just let that little bit ahead of him. Yes. I could see where this band were going. It just wasn't live forever or wonder what. I could see what was coming that these boys the weren't going to be one hit wonders. They were wrong for a long, long time, and they were going to be superstars, you know. But um, yeah, and then I just I started playing the drums. We then bought me a kit when I was about eleven, and um, I got lessons from Sean Ford and Talker. And I was learning how to read music through Trinity College in London. And I'd done up to grade three. And to be honest, like, 
you know, when you look at bands playing, like you don't see Roger Taylor or any of them sitting down with a chat in front of them, like they are just playing. You and know ex I mean? explain to people watching Wales, we'd say that people like myself, my children play instruments, but I've never mastered an instrument. So when you say grade or level three, like is that like a is stepping it, stone? Or? It was to seven grades okay. until you get your distinguished level. Um, and I'd sat three exams, as I say, I got up to level three reading music, reading drum music, and like I, I was just saying to myself, like, you know, I'm watching all these fellas on MTV or whatever at the time, none of them had music chaps, these boys were just pure rockers, I suppose. And, Playing music. And they just had it in their head, and, and, and I felt I had it in my head, um, and that I didn't need to learn how to read this stuff because I could just play it. And um, got fed up with the drums and after a while, and the neighbours won't be happy either, to be honest. <laughs> I'd and, say they weren't uh, happy when you gave so, the drums up. When I was about 13, then I got a guitar for Christmas. I got a Fender, Fender Squire, electric guitar. And um, myself and Ian Reardon, you know Ian Reardon? Mm -hmm. Myself and Ian, we were all neighbours like Kiara Manning. Um, we used to have an old jam, you know, Manning behind the drums. We were up in Ian's shed, and Ian would be playing lead, we'd be playing rhythm. And that's when I, I wrote my first song then, with them. An age? A, a, song, a song that became my most popular song now, because it took me 15 years actually to finish the song, to the way I wanted it. But that's where that song started to come home, my hand song. An age 13? Yeah, I wrote my first song then with the lads. And then we wrote yeah. another couple, and believe it or not, I found the songs in my grandmother's attic a couple of months ago. And I text Kieran and I said, you're not going to believe this. And I shot, the, shot him on my phone and I sent him to him. He couldn't believe it. He says, you still have them 20, geez, 22 years later, like, you know, and I, I came across all the, all the songs, so I have no, well, there's actually some really good lines in there, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reuse them. I thought I'm going to reuse them. It is a good song. Like, I, I listened to it before I knew I was going to be speaking to you today, but I, I also know that you did try other mu musical instruments like flutes and tin whistles and drums, but what is it about the guitar, in your opinion, that a lot of musicians, it's like an extension of their hand almost. What is it for yourself? Well, the guitar for me really starting off was when I was writing to find the keys and just give myself some sort of structure to a song. Okay. So like I'd have the song in my head. See, I, when I write songs, I mostly start with a chorus. And I build a song around the chorus Brilliant. with a good hook, with a good hook in the chorus. And then use the hook as the title if you can. And then that, that attracts the listener then because they're waiting for that hook. They come hold my hands on this, the name of the song is mentioned in the song six or seven times. That's your hook. So you think if you have a good body of uh, a yeah, chorus, a good, a good catchy, that. something that will draw the listener in. Like, um, so I intend to work my songs that, that way, do you know what I mean? Like, good hooks are very important because if, sure, if there's no structure or, or hook to the song, sure people just going to forget it. Like. I understand. So I intend to um, to walk walk in that direction. Do you know what I mean? And another thing as well, my is that like like myself, you're obviously a very proud Cork man, and more importantly, a proud Northside man. But it does come across in a lot of your songs about how passionate you are as a person who's came from that area. Do you think that that's enhanced you as a person, both as a as a musician and as a a person, say to your family? Yeah, well, the support I got, like sure, look, I was. As I said, three years ago, I had nothing, right? I had no equipment, I had no broken down guitar, I had a tin whistle. That was, that was it. My dad was out to get rid of the drum kit years ago because it was just collecting dust in the house. He told me a few times come and get it and I didn't come and get it so he just flogged it. But um, it's the support I got and I'm a firm believer in giving back. So if somebody gives me something, I give you something back. Yes. Do you know what I mean? That's the way an art side people work, as you know. Anyway. And um, so, f from the world go then, Eric Howie gave me a great deal out. I rang him, I said, look Eric, I'm thinking about going into the songwriting business. And I said, look, I feel I'm up for it. I'm the wasting years of my life. I said, I should have done it years ago when I was a teenager. He said, no bother. He said, come down to my place. He said, I've just had a gear there out in the shed. He said, look, you get job running. And fair play to Eric, he gave me the gear. He didn't take anything off me, actually. He gave me the gear. He said, drive on and get yourself sorted. So, um, that was a big help, obviously, yeah, to get you where you were. I didn't have money at the time to buy it, like, honestly, God, I just didn't have it. And um, Eric got me out of a jam, and um, it just it just released Kino, and the whole thing just went out of control. 
it was people phoning me and there weren't small poking places that were phoning me, there were established places where, mm -hmm. where fellas that I thought were great and that I heard about growing up, I was saying, I'd love to get in there eventually and play in the same place that he was. Yeah. Or where he is, the likes of Kramer, you know, like Kieran's a good friend of mine now, but he would have been a good friend of my father's and my mother's. And like I remember we starting off saying, I'd love to get into the venues, not what Kramer was playing. It's a good you know, feeling for an artist. Or Andy. Andy Dunn. Um, Jesus, a lot of great men that, that helped me along the way, we'll talk about them after. But like, and uh, in a matter of weeks I was there. Do you know what I mean? I was there. I was saying, well, it wasn't that hard after all, actually. And then it was just about belief in myself. And I think as well, a lot of your personal beliefs were enhanced by the people who gave you the opportunity in, in the bars and the parties and the events that you did. Well, well the most of the people that gave me the opportunities were all on. That's what I'm saying. North side. Yes. And no disrespect, there was people in the south side too. Yes. But I had to start local. And like, as I say, even before the gigs, when I used to sing in the Wolf Tone with Lloyd on, on, a, on a Monday there, I went on for a couple of points, singing away with the lads. It was actually Lloyd like, was another fellow who encouraged me along. And, and, and fair play to Lloyd, though, he did ring around as well and say, look, listen, you should give your man a go, like, mm -hmm. you know? And then there was the song choice as well. I had to decide myself, like, what am I going singing? Do you know what I mean? Like, the fact that you had the upbringing with the likes of Queen and, yeah, you know, Yeah, and I, I just love folk. And I did try to write pop songs, and I did hook up with three other individuals. Um, Kieran Manning, going back to my old friend, Liam Milan and Shane Murphy, and uh, kind of Liam was saying to me, look, why is it like I'm not been bad? Like, but you know, we're, we're on a different level, like, and he yes. was saying, like, there was nothing wrong with you, and maybe you, you know, maybe you're jumping the gun a bit, like, I think you should stick to what you know best and what you're good at. And he was right. Um, I'm not going to say what we didn't try if we did. Uh, we had a bit of a session together and stuff, but I mean, Liam was, Liam was playing 20, 25 years. He, he has a lot of experience and he knew, he knew in his hands, so it wasn't going to work, you know what I mean? So, but look, I am where I am, and as I say, the people of Cork, we won't say the north side because they were, but the people of Cork really, really, really have helped me and inspired me to write more songs. Everybody from drug addicts to the travellers. To Republicans, to, um, to sports stars, all aspects. Not, and if you listen to all my songs, everybody's included in my albums. I don't just don't write for one particular group of society. I write for try, try for to bring everybody. And that leads me nicely to my my next question uh, about the lucky break, as you said. Um, one positive story for yourself, um, a bit like Roy Keane. He yeah. got a lucky break all those years ago. But uh, a big help, I suppose, to yourself and a big personal achievement came when you presented Roy Keane at the Cove Ramblers questions and answers session recently and you made a presentation of the song that he gave you to go ahead to write. That must have been a big sense of personal satisfaction, bearing in mind what he did for you when you were just 10 years of age. Well, I, I waited 23 years to see him. Um, I could probably have went the ball through other channels, but I felt that Bobby Donovan was probably the best channel to speak to regarding the matter. Mm -hmm. um, going back a few years ago, there was a rock mount man was the go-between when I was writing the song, James E. James e. Cochran. And uh, he, was, he, he, he went over and, and passed the message on and said, look. So then I, I gave the Keane family the, um, the song. Roy gave me the go-ahead and, and it took off from there. And to meet him then, um, after all the years, I, I, that must have been fantastic. I walked onto the stage and I said it to my father after, I said, I actually can't even remember doing it now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I was so focused and not tripping or not stuttering. Yes. I, I just I just couldn't believe myself, right? So in a way, even though I, I was standing with him when we were talking to each other, when I, when I sat down again, I couldn't. I was saying, did that, did that just happen? So a, a number of things actually happened, Miles. One, you gave um, a legend of soccer your work. Two, you met a lifelong, I suppose, personal hero of yours. Yeah. And three, you got to say thanks. I did. I said it to him. I said, look, Roy, I said, um, thanks. And he said, no problem. And I said, um, because I said, um, I never forgot it all my life. I said, I was waiting for today. And he said, um, no, Baron, I said, to him, what do you think of the song? 
He said I think it was pretty good. I said I'll take that from you, so this is great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's good. And if you watch the video, that's exactly what we're laughing at. It's yes. that comment I was laughing at and he's laughing at. And someone caught a great picture of the two of us laughing together, actually. And um, But no, Roy Keane, in my eyes, we will never see a Roy Keane again. Agreed. Ever in this country. Cork will probably never get the likes of him again. Um, but I just personally, outside of the song and outside of what he did for me, I follow Liverpool. Yeah, which is ironic. But <laughs> when Roy Keane played for Manchester United, especially in the Champions League, I would watch Manchester United just because Roy Keane was playing. I didn't care about who else was playing. I only wanted to see him and just his, his whole drive and everything, his ability, his ambition to win. He wanted the loser, you know, and... But to be honest, like, I suppose in a way it's the same as the music, it's the drive. And with music, you, you get out what you put in. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you want to invest a couple of bob into recording the song somewhere, if you want to do it down there for 20 or but if you want to do a professional one down there for 400 or I mean, it, it's you, you, you get what you put in. And Roy Keane became the world's greatest footballer because he put it in and he put himself there. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to put myself in these in, in places as well where I feel myself I can get. Do you know what I mean? And that's a good trait, I suppose, Miles, in any industry, whether you're a musician, a teacher, or, you know, a football star, you want an end result, right? So your end result at the moment is you have two years left on your, your five year plan. So what lies ahead for Miles Gaffney? What are your what are your dreams and aspirations over the coming two to three years? Well tomorrow I want to double it out to meet a few people. Um I suppose any one time I'd have 30 songs on the go. And when I finish 15, it's still 30. Because while I'm writing them 15, I have another, I'm gonna have to come across more stuff. Do you know, and one thing I learned actually, especially in Cork is, do not tell somebody what you're planning. I made that mistake. It's a learning curve. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that there was so much competition there, and I'm not in any competition, I'm only in competition with myself, to better myself. Um, but I shared one or two things with people before, before I knew my ideas were gone. Really? Yeah, and um, that's why I decided to operate on my own, keep the circle small, deal with the same people, and keep your mouth shut, and just come out with what you're doing, and tell people what they need to know when it's happening. I would take that as a compliment though, for yourself, if somebody's taking your idea to use it for themselves, I would take it as a compliment that it was actually something worth trying. Yeah, it was, and uh, yeah, that was actually said to me as well. I, felt as, I, I said it to somebody before, a well-established musician as well, and he said, well, they listened to it, didn't they? There you go. And I said, yeah, well, I said I, was, I wasn't happy about it at the time, but look, I learned from it, and I just keep my ship tight, and I just... Don't tell anybody what I'm doing. It's just, I suppose, but it's the way I was. I, I grew up as well. Like you, you know, the way it is. It's a good, it's a good ethos. Like but you know, the way it is. Grow up in the north side. Like you, yeah. you don't go around and you don't talk about others. Well. You, you know what I mean? You do just, you just do your own thing and stick to yourself, and everything will be fine. We all know that. You just, you just, yeah, do your thing, and that's what I'm doing. And um, so, I released that song last week. Song for Father Mothers. 90 odd thousand hits like in two weeks, it's phenomenal. That's very good. Um, so that's the new one. So I intend on bringing out maybe two songs this year after this, maybe th maybe four in total, three or four. And, and then once January comes, then I'll tear into the next album. But the next album for me has to be the definitive. Do you know what I mean? There's only so many songs I could write about Cork. So the kind of Cork stuff now is putting the shelf away. I gave the people of Cork songs to sing and things to remember through song, right? Not say till I die, long after I'm dead and you're dead and he is. Our children and our grandchildren will sing that song because I have videos on my phone, tr children three, four, five, wearing the caps the same as I wear. Singing North Side Till I Die for the mothers and the fathers of parties and everything. Is there a young lad called Charlie? Did I hear a video of Charlie so? Duffy, yeah. He's, he sings. Is he from up the country or? No, no, he's he from. Um, well, his grandparents from Fair Hill. His mother's from Fair Hill. I don't know where his father's from, actually. Sorry, Peter. Um, but, so, but uh, no, he sings um, The Broken Clock. 
So for those who, who don't know what we're talking about, um, Miles has a song and there's a video of a young three-year-old boy called Charlie and he's singing along to a song um, when the song has been played, I think, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on the telly in the house. On the and he's sitting down, playing along, singing the song to me. And, um, do you know what, even when, when you see that, like, to me, that's success, right? If nobody else is listening to you, so he is. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he is. He's only a child. But, like, I have a following in, from kids that size to people who phone me or, or text me or send the e email website saying, Look, Miles, you're playing inside the pub or you're playing in the Hanover. Look, my father was 75 years of age. He can't stand up. Is there any way you can sort him out of seat? That's sort him out of seat. No problem. Put his name on it. That's that. Do you know what? I, I had a woman recently, not even far from here. Me and Misha went to bought tickets to see her. Um, I have a bad back. Is there any, any way you can, you can get me a seat? Do you know what I mean? But like success I think is measured by different people in different ways. Like Christy Digman from Aslan was on um, the Late Late Show yeah. and he actually sang with the Furies uh, not so long ago before Christmas. But he was asked a question. To him was success about the, the money side of it or the fame side of it. And he said success to him, like what you just said, unknown to, I don't know if you heard this, but he said success to me it was a night here people singing songs and singing songs that I sang and he said when I'm long gone they'll still be there. So that's that's I, success to you of what I did. Yeah, I, I was but I was, but that's the clock stuff. I need to go abroad or feel out that's what I'm doing, that's why I'm going to Dublin tomorrow obviously. Mm -hmm. Sunday last Sunday I sat down with Tommy Bone from those tones. We had a couple of points and we were talking about songs, right? And I said to him, Tommy, I said, see our song, the Celtic Symphony. Joe McDonald, they will stand the test of time. Yeah. I said, we spoke about Finbar Fiori. I said, his song with Eric Bogle, The Green Fields of France, will stand the test of time. And he says to me, but where are you going with this, Miles? I said, you know where I'm going? I'm going to find songs that are going to die, and I'm going to bring them back to life. And I said, do you know what I sang earlier? He said, well, I sang your song. He said, what song is that? I said, The Lock Shield and Eviction. Well, Tommy didn't write it, but Tommy sang it. Yeah. He says, he said, I haven't seen that for a long time. I said, well, Tommy, I sang a while ago. And I said, you know, the minute I hit that chorus, I said, you see the heads turning, said, didn't hear that for a long time. And they fall in straight away. Anybody who knows that song will sing it, because they're like, jeez, I didn't hear that for 30 years, 40 years. So that's what I plan. To, uh, I plan on bringing a new show with me, right? I have a new guy working with me. Now we're going to start doing a bit of two-piece work as well shortly, maybe in the new year now, a guy called Keel and Kenny. And he played on the um, he played on the, the, the new song I brought him a few weeks ago, um, because the other because all the other lads around the place they're all involved with different bands and different projects, and I needed somebody who could work at my pace and, and commit with me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I explained to him that I bring all my songs forward, all the new songs, but I also want to find um, songs that that are dying and bring them back and keep them going. And um, I have a phone number actually, I must give him a call. Uh, um, Stephen Dunn, the Pepper Dunn son, the Travellers. Mm -hmm. The Travellers had their own songs. And I wrote a song for, for the Travellers because I went to travel, I wrote the Travellers all my life. And um, my best friend was a traveller, he passed away last year, John Buck. Yeah, um, you know, well, I actually well, did an event for his fact Yeah, and yeah, um, myself him. and John were, were good friends for 20 years and, and I really love John and I miss him. And um, so I'm going to get on to, to, to Stephen as well. I have his phone with him ringing me. I might give him a ring tomorrow when I'm in Dublin, actually, and, uh, and just ask him, look, there's only a couple of songs there you can give me that are belong to the travelling people that I could see. Because Christy Moore done it with John Riley, the traveller. Yeah. Um, Go, Move, Shift, and all, all them songs, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they were traveller songs, and, and I'm not saying I wouldn't sing them all, but I'm just looking for stuff. It hasn't been heard for years from bringing it forward, do you know what I mean? So Miles, before we finish up, I suppose the big question for uh, everybody watching is when is the third album coming out? What's what's in store for Miles Gaffney? Well, about 18 months from now, um, I was in a recording studio with Andy Dunn, like two of us in for two and a half years. You know what I mean? For the first album? For two for of them. So we, 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 we spent 10 months making Redemption Road, and then 
I brought out in June, we sold out the path, and we started recording again in October. And we recorded right up till last September, and I released Don't Underestimate Me in November, which was only five months ago. Then I went back to the studio without Andy this time, because he has his own thing going on with Gallion and stuff, and mm -hmm. his own solo projects um, with Keelan. And um, we bought a song for Fallen Mothers. So that was only a few weeks ago, and I have two songs that I want to do myself this year, maybe three. And once January comes, then I'm going to go to America, and um, I'm going to pick 10, and 10, 12 of the, of, of the songs that I think are the best, that I wrote between now and then. And um, that will be it. But what I might do, is I might take, come all my hands on, and um, Sean Foster, big song, that's mm -hmm. a big song. It is, yeah. Um, and maybe one or two, and just make a definitive, that this is me, this is what I've done over the last five years, as I said, we go back to the five year plan, and um, see where it goes from there. But I feel that if I go to America, I need to go there, I need to go there for me. For yourself. Yeah, I need to go there for me and see how I go on. Yeah. You know, I, I there's only so much I can do around here. I don't want to end up one of these fellas, you know, and you go into a venue and the people say, ah, him, I should have listened to him 20 years. Jeez, him over there. Mm. You want to go to a place where people are anticipating going. Yeah, yeah. So I can't wait to hear him sing that song tonight. Well, I'd say, Miles, you still have that. Um, I wish you well in the next couple of years and into the future. I know that we will see and hear more from Miles Gaffney, um, not just here in Cork, but further and beyond. So thanks very much for coming in to have a chat with us today. Um, Northside Till We Die. Northside Till We Die. <laughs> so from myself, Alan Gould, Brian O'Sullivan and production, we'd like to thank Miles Gaffney for coming here to the top of the hill in Grand Water Road uh, to have a chat with us. Um, so thanks for joining us on Unity TV and until the next time, we'll talk then. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>